but I wish they would stop predicting uh, environmental repercussions because they've done it a lot and it hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. Like in 2003, James Hansen, the NASA guy was like, if we don't completely reverse what we're doing in 10 years, it's too late. Well, it's like 13 years past that deadline and they're still saying it's not too late because you can't ever say it's too late. Yeah. It possibly is too late. We possibly already cast the dice, mm -hmm. but we don't know. So seven years, um, I wouldn't take that bet, but it's it should be on the table. Yeah. That's so. Now, as you travel the country, you are like, I, I remember it's been so long since I toured America, seven, six years. Uh, I'm sorry, five years. But I remember like, I think it was an Indiana gig I would play once a year and I'd pass the one barn with the Confederate flag on the roof. Hmm. Yes, be maha, I would. They will stop predicting environmental repercussions because they have done it a lot and it hasn't happened. I agree with B. Maha in this case. When you take a look at what they have been saying in the past, like in 10 years, this will happen. I want to take an example with our goal. Our goal goes on a hinge run, claims we are boiling the oceans and creating rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land, creating the drought and melting the ice and rising the sea level. This guy has predicted a lot of things that will happen in the future. When you look at what he has been saying compared to what we are witnessing today, none has not happened. This is clearly tells you that they are insane. Reason, I agree with B. Maha. I don't want to talk much. Let me play this video so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to bring these emissions down. And, and just to put the science in a, a slightly different context, people are familiar with that thin blue line that the uh, astronauts bring back in their pictures from space. That's the, that's the part of the atmosphere that has oxygen, the troposphere. Uh, and it's only five to seven kilometers thick. That's what we're using as an open sewer. If you could drive a car straight up in the air at interstate highway speeds, you'd get to the top of that blue line in five minutes. And all the greenhouse gas pollution would be below you. We're still putting 162 million tons into it every single day. And the accumulated amount is now trapping as much extra heat as would be released by 600,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every single day on the Earth. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had and we need have had and we need to make some changes. Yes, I believe you've seen this. I think I posted this last year because I did a lot of videos partaking to the World Economic Forum. This same man has been doing a lot in the past predicting that in five years, ten years, this will be happening. Oceans will be boiling. The, you know, the way they usually pass out this message is always frightening. And Bima saw this, like, this need to stop. You know, sometimes I don't agree with Bimaha. When I look at this video, you know, what he said is just the truth. They need to stop this. They have been predicting and we are still there. Nothing is happening. When you look at the World Economic Forum, that was not even our focus on this video. Bima said something, pertaining to Trump, which I saw to be important, we can look deep into. The young voters gravitating to Donald Trump over Israel, Palestine, you are giving up everything that supposedly is important to you and putting it all on the line of this one issue. Okay, they had a segment they talked about Trump. Bimar sent a warning to Democrats like, you are joking. 
Trump will win Biden if care is not taken. At the end of the day, what I realized was different. Take a look at this. The fact that you do have people in their 20s, even their 30s, who are, who are gravitating to Donald Trump over this one issue, and it's admittedly a horrific issue to process in every way. And I've been reading about it since October 7th because I felt like I was not educated enough, and I'm still reading about it and still feeling like I, I'm not grasping every nuance. I would hope that everybody protesting has done the same. Um, but it means that you are, you are giving up on uh, uh, reproductive freedom. You're giving up on climate legislation. You're giving up on everything that supposedly is important to you and putting it all on the line for this one issue. And Which you're also wrong about. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's can I, well... First of all... And, and by the way, potentially giving up gay marriage, as Clarence Thomas told us when he, when he released his opinion. Uh, right. Yes, I believe you should clearly see why they are afraid of Trump. He talked about climate change, like... You should not only focus with this Israel and Palestine war, like I will vote Trump because of this, because of that. You are forgetting the important issues. He come climate change, which is my focus on this video. When you take a look at what happened during the World Economic Forum this week, they are panicking and one of their reasons is just like this. I don't get the point why Trump is a threat to these people. This man outlined, you know, a lot of things, you know, that Trump details. When Trump was president, I believe some of these things were happening, though it was not loud like we are seeing today. When you take a look at this article recently published by Fox News, Bima won upcoming Trump trials will make him look like a revolutionary leader. This is one thing, Democrats are also panicking. Now if you look at the tires, the way they are just you know, playing around with it because they have seen that this is not favoring them the way they thought. Democrats thought initially going after Trump, you know, my triggered voters to dislike him, but it was the inverse. So he's a threat to many people at this level. Reasons millionaires are spending huge sums of money just so that Trump should not win. When I take a look at Biden campaign recently, just sort of giving in about two hundred and fifty, I don't know, thousand like that for his campaign, you know, to defeat Trump, it tells me everything I need to know. How panicking Democrat can be. You know, um, you know, we just heard this, this this point about untrustworthy people, and we talked about things in the United States like, you know, like um, checks and balances, which aren't written anywhere, but are customs. And one man, Donald Trump, literally came in and just took that, you know, took that, took that all away.